Well, how do we spot the signs of bitterness? Uh, you know, when you go to the doctor, in fact, every January, I, you know, my annual physical, I always remember it, my birthday month, so I go there, and my doctor, Bart Lewis, he'll be on his little stool, and he'll roll up, and he'll get close to me, and he'll say, um, do you ever feel this? Uh, have you had this recently? How long has it been since this happened? Uh, are you starting to, uh, do you? And what he's doing is he's, he's asking me to give him what he will start seeing as signs of different ailments that, that I should be, uh, you know, preparing for. What are the signs? Here are a few ways you can spot someone that's bitter. Number one, they have a lack of concern for others. And the reason they have a lack of concern for others is they're totally focused on themselves. Secondly, they're very sensitive and touchy. I mean, it's abnormally sensitive and touchy. For instance, if they are bitter uh, about something else, they walk into a room and if the people stop talking, they think they were talking about them. You see, they, you know how it says in the Proverbs, the wicked run when no one's chasing them, but the righteous are bold as a lion. In the New Testament, it puts it this way, we believe the truth. We don't believe something that's a lie. We believe the truth. And we believe that we're forgiven and they're forgiven and we should be kind and tenderhearted and they should be too and we're not going to suspect. But the bitter person is sensitive and touchy and they, they don't want to meet new people. They have no gratitude and they usually either speak, their words are, are worthless. Either they're empty or they're just tinged with this harsh criticism uh, because it's, it's, Remember, out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. James said these things should not be. Can a fountain bring forth sweet water and bitter? He says no. No, you've got to have a clean fountain in order to have a, a, a clean life-giving flow of words. Uh, here's, here's another one. This is, this is probably the, the best indicator. They hold grudges against people for a long time. Uh, they, they find it very, very difficult to forgive. They put barriers up to forgiveness. It's kind of like, you know, going to the White House. You've got to go through all these barriers because of, you know, all the threats. And so, you know, and, and military bases, you have to weave around all those concrete barriers. That's what these people are like. They've got every barrier to forgiveness, and they don't, they don't really want to forgive anyone. And they, they have this stubbornness. Did you know stubbornness is not a virtue? Tenacity is, stubbornness is negative. Some people pride themselves in, I'm stubborn. Really? You think, that, is that one of the fruits of the Spirit? It's a fruit of the flesh. It's not a fruit of the Spirit. Your flesh is prompting that. And often this stubborn, sulking, you know, I'm not going to ever be happy attitude. But here's another one. If, if the, um, the holding grudges is a glaring indicator, so is this one the volatility. Uh, they have high and happiness uh, extremes one moment, and the next thing you know, they're so low, they're just out of sight. And they just, do you know why people are like that? Because the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable. And, and if they know in one part of their mind that they are absolutely forever forgiven by a God who says that I have no limits, that I will forgive you uh, every sin you ever commit forever, and they know that, and they know that he has attached to their life that they're supposed to be that way too. And they're not. They have a double-mindedness. They look this way at God and they look in a different way at people instead of the same way. And that makes them with this volatile instability in their life, which is another glaring evidence. And bitterness, actually, a real sign of it is that it's kind of like a little taste of hell. One of the worst things about bitterness is it doesn't stop. It keeps getting worse. It starts as a little seed, but it grows and festers into a cancer. It's a cancerous infection. It's one of the more deadly ones in our spiritual life. If you're infected by bitterness, we can only get out of our self-imposed prison by repenting. And you repent when you call it what God calls it. God says the Spirit of God in the power of Christ's cross, can set us free. If, look at verse 31, if we get rid of, if we stop and ditch it, 